I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Yeah. Mark my words. Yeah. Mark his words. Now the president has forced a government shutdown because he's insisting that American taxpayers pay for that wall. What, what gives? Sure. And if you ask the president, he'll point you immediately to something else that didn't get a lot of news in the last couple of weeks, which is this new uh, U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement, the USMCA, uh, which is so much better for us than the NAFTA deal that American workers are going to do better, the government is going to do better, and you could make the argument that Mexico is paying for it in that fashion. But none of that is Mexico paying for the wall. I mean, let's just be but clear Technically, about you this. and I both know that it, it, it cannot work exactly like that. I can't spend any, any money at the Office of Management and uh, of Budget. The Department of Homeland Security can't actually spend money from Mexico. We have to get it from the Treasury. Because you're not going to get it from Mexico. You were never going to get it from Mexico. Everybody said you were never going to get it from Mexico. And you know, you know, back when you were talking about Donald Trump being a terrible human being and talking about how stupid the wall was, you know that Donald Trump was lying to voters when he said that he was going to build a wall and get the money from Mexico. And yet, you go on TV shows and, for God knows why, uh, destroy your reputation. You had a good reputation as a deficit hawk when you were in Congress. Mick, I, I just, I don't understand it. Never will. Uh, why, why people throw themselves under the bus for Donald Trump. It never ends well for them. So as our own Chris Hayes reimagined the chance at the Trump rallies for 2020, uh, Donald Trump will be going out saying, what are we going to build? The response, aesthetically tasteful still slats. <laughs> Who's going to pay for it? <laughs> the net growth resulting from a mildly renegotiated <laughs> trade deal. Uh, Susan Page doesn't exactly pack the same punch uh, and also doesn't really justify politically a government shutdown that is making less and less sense even to Donald Trump's strongest supporters. Well, one thing that's remarkable about what Mick Mulvaney said yesterday on the shows was that somehow calling it steel slats would convince Democrats it wasn't a wall and be okay to support it, which, by the way, is, is not going to happen. <clears throat> I mean, if President Trump could not get funding for his wall when Republicans controlled the House and Senate, why in the world is he going to be able to get funding for the wall when Democrats take over the House? And that's one reason this shutdown doesn't make much sense, because his negotiating position doesn't get stronger if he waits until the new Congress, if he waits until the new year, as Mulvaney said yesterday he's prepared to do. His negotiating position gets, gets weaker. Uh, the Democrats have zero incentive to give him any money for his wall. Well, and, and Susan, he listened again. He listened to uh, Rush Limbaugh and Ann Coulter, who were scalding him on Twitter and on talk radio, despite the fact that he had been given a deal that Republicans wanted him to go with. And so, I mean, the Wall Street Journal's editorial board uh, put it best this morning. They're out with a blistering op ed uh, that's called The Phony Shutdown War. Criticizing President Trump over his strategy for instigating and now navigating the government shutdown. It writes this. This is the Wall Street Journal. Trump can't decide what he really wants and seems to have no political strategy for achieving whatever it is. This is the Wall Street Journal. First, he surprised everyone by taking public ownership of a possible shutdown in a meeting in the Oval Office with Democratic leaders. By the way, this is the Wall Street Journal saying this. Then he agreed to Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell's proposal to fund the government for two months to move the funding debate into the new year when Democrats run the House. Then the Freedom GOP House Caucus and talk radio hosts stomp their feet and Trump flip back to welcoming a shutdown and tweeting that, quote, it could be a long stay. I don't know if I told you, but this is a conservative Wall Street Journal editorial page asking the question, to what end? Trump's shutdown tactic is to hold his breath until the other side gives in. <laughs> this didn't work for Newt Gingrich in 1995, though at least Newt was battling Bill Clinton over major reforms in the entitlement state. Trump is holding his breath over a mere $3.4 in spending for a piece of political symbolism. And Rick Tyler, as I have said forever, 
This is a $5 billion payoff for a political punchline that Donald Trump can deliver at political rallies. You've got American soldiers that are yanked out of Syria and put on the border between Texas and Mexico, again, for more political symbolism. This is a battle over nothing, and it is Republicans who are going to get obliterated by it. Well, Joe, first let me say that Mick Mulvaney has uh, joined the ranks of horrible human beings. Um, but look, advocating for the wall, where walls can make sense in certain yeah. urban areas, and we have walls where they do make sense, arguing over a wall is like arguing over uh, the Pony Express. So instead of sending your packages by Federal Express or UPS overnight uh, to get them there by tomorrow, Christmas, which some will deliver, uh, it is arguing about the Pony Express. It technologically just makes no sense. It's all regressive. It's backward looking. It doesn't, it won't stop illegal immigration. It certainly won't uh, stop drug trafficking where you can take a quad drone and lift 30 pounds, you know, 30 miles uh, easily. And it's only going to get more like that. So the building a wall is complete waste of money. And, and, and John Meacham, again, reading the Wall Street Journal, who has at times defended Donald Trump uh, in ways that I found maddening, the editorial page, this is what they say about building the wall. Building the wall across the entire 1,954-mile border would be expensive, and it wouldn't stop illegal immigration since most illegals arrive by overstaying their legal visas. Again, this has been the insanity of this whole build the wall argument sure. for three years now. First of all, we have a net negative flow going back into Mexico, and we did during the entire campaign, which we pointed out every day. But secondly, even if you build a wall, you even have the Wall Street Journal saying that doesn't work because most illegal immigration is from people overstaying their legal visas. Yeah, two, two things about this. One is the journal is speaking from a place of classical conservatism there. The, the journal, at its best, uh, has embodied the idea of the free flow of people, ideas, and goods. Uh, it was a kind of conservatism that was embodied by President Reagan, who talked about uh, improving on the Sermon on the Mount, as only Ronald Reagan could do, uh, making a city upon a hill into a shining city on a hill, uh, talking about free trade, and the idea that a, after Adam Smith, a competition created more wealth, created more liberty. You can, you can argue with that all you want, but at least that's a principled view. I, I would disagree with the phrase political symbolism. The wall in Donald Trump's land, Trump land, is not a symbol. It's the whole damn thing. It's the embodiment of the politics of fear over the politics of hope. If he gives up the wall, He's basically admitting that the whole thing was a fraud. I think the whole thing was a fraud, but he's not going to admit that. And the people, and, the, and you and I know them, you and I are related to them, uh, they, they tend to be in more rural, more southern, uh, more western places, but not all. They believe that caravans <laughs> are coming because they're told that. They believe that immigrants, uh, illegal immigrants, are on crime sprees because that's what they've been told. And they have been told that this wall will fix America. It will keep these people who don't look like us from taking over America, from moving into jobs, from changing the culture. The wall is the whole thing. And so. But we could argue about the political tactics of this. Six months from now, no one's going to remember this shutdown. But I think that if you don't, if you're a Trump supporter and you don't deal with the fact that your entire vote is basically built and your support is basically built on the idea that you're going to ineffectually and, 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 and in fact, symbolically keep people out of a country that was entirely built on people coming in. If you don't deal with that, we're not going to have this fever break, and this fever's got to break. Well, it, it, it's a fever that, that's been whipped up by a series of political lies. It, we don't have an immigration crisis right now. We did a decade ago. 
when we had yeah. illegal immigrants rushing across the border, and I was the first one. Uh, I mean, I, again, I'm very Joe, conservative can I, can when I it comes to illegal. Yeah, can I yeah, Rick. I, I was just saying, I, I'm, I'm really conservative when it when it comes to immigration, and, and I want people coming into the United States legally. If I thought a wall would would make it harder for uh, uh, floods of illegal immigrants in the future to come to the United States, I would support a wall. It doesn't do anything. No, and 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 I want to thank John Meacham for pointing out that this is a classic uh, uh, classic liberalism or. or as he phrased it, the classical conservative position, because it is, because remember, Ronald Reagan's most famous quote was tearing down a wall, uh, not building a wall. But remember what you said about visas. Visa overstays are the most, uh, are the biggest source of illegal immigration. And do you know which country has the most vi visa overstays? Uh, I, I don't want to pick on the Canadians, but it is the Canadians. So why aren't we concerned about what visa is overstays? That by the a boot? It's horrible. It, Go ahead. So, <laughs> so why, why are we concerned about why aren't we concerned about Canadian visa overs? Because they're white people. I, I mean, and I've gotten in this fight over the last week. We've seen, and and I think John Meacham's right. It, it is the whole thing because it's all about keeping non-white people from crossing the border. The fears are all race-based. Yeah. All right, Rick Tyler. Uh, thank you so much for being with us this morning. We really do appreciate. It. Hope you have a great. Christmas and coming up next, Senator Bob Corker revives his classic Twitter hashtag alert the daycare staff. We'll tell you why. Uh, and we're also going to be talking more about Jim Mattis's exit from the administration as the president refuses to let his defense secretary dictate his exit after his stinging rebuke of Donald Trump. Don't bother quitting because you're fired. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.